After making the divination by playing cards video, also known as cardamacy, I wanted to follow up with a tarot video and this is it. Many of the spreads that I will be showing today are the same as same ones that I used for the playing cards. The only difference is, of course, we're using tarot cards, okay? The tarot is believed to have been invented in Italy specifically to play a game called Terranacci in the 15th century. However, there are several stories floating around all over the world that they are the originator of the tarot deck. I can understand why everybody wants to claim the tarot as their invention mainly because it's been in, in circulation since the since the 15th century now whether it was actually created in italy or not i i can't really confirm i've read all kinds of different accounts as to where they actually came from no one knows i don't know um but you know they've been around for a very long time and people do believe in the accuracy of their readings um what else i also want to tell you in this particular slide um i, I they are uh, available um, online you can also purchase them in the store like I said you know they're a somewhat of a, of a reliable uh, source when it comes to divination the tarot has 78 cards divided into sections that would be the major and the minor arcana many speculate that the minor arcana consisting of 56 cards were created first and then the major arcana made up of 22 cards were added later. <clears throat> For the demonstrations in this video, I'll be using the Writer Tarot deck. This deck has been published in numerous editions. Over 100 million copies of the deck circulate across 20 countries, and of course it has inspired several other decks to be created. Here is a different version of the tarot deck, you know, depending on what kind of personality you have. Some people like, you know, the cute type stuff. Some people like, you know, celestial designs. Some people like cartoons and some people like TV shows. Okay. I will tell you there is a tarot deck just about for everybody. Okay. Um, I like the Gumi Bear tarot because of course it's cute and I've seen the individual cards um, in this deck and I got to tell you they're just adorable. Okay. The link for these cards will be in the description box um, in the attachment. Okay, while I was looking for ideas to suggest, I stumbled upon this particular deck. It's called the Biblical Tarot. Now, I know that I've been watching a couple of videos lately and I've been hearing like, you know, some people discussing, you know, whether tarot is sort of like, you know, a, a touchy subject with some people and not everybody is comfortable using the tarot. So if you are one of those people who, who do not feel comfortable with using any form of divination, then this video is not for you, okay? Um, some people have more of an open mind. And, um, you know, I, I can understand how some people may not be comfortable with the use of tarot, okay? But, you know, um, it is a personal choice. And maybe, you know, the only thing I can suggest for you is if um, you have some sort of conflict about using the tarot, you know, you might want to make that a, a matter of prayer, okay? Um, some people, uh, you know, I, I suggest everyone pray over anything that they bring into their house, okay? But this is an alternative, okay? Because not everybody is comfortable with, you know, um, like earth-based type symbolism on cards and if that's fine if that's fine but some people are okay and open to the idea of using tarot cards okay so this one right here is a biblical is biblical tarot cards it looks like they have biblical characters on the um cards if this is something that you're interested in like i understand that this does not make it using divination better but it is an option okay so um the link for these bibl the biblical tarot will be in the description box okay whatever tarot deck you choose make sure you cleanse and charge your deck your deck of cards is your divination tool and it's important to establish a link with your cards remove all energy by using a purifying incense on your deck and pray that you will receive divine guidance use cleansing incenses such as nag champa palo santos or dragon's blood these feature incense are packs from satya and the Items are listed in the attachment located in the description box. The minor arcana in the tarot is divided into four suits that reflect our everyday challenges and obstacles. 
Pentacles represents money and the material world, such as property and business. And swords are used to represent strategies, dealing with conflicts, and showing ambition. Wands represent adventure and competition. Cups represent relationships and emotions that can be happy or sad. The Minor Arcana correlates to playing cards, and both the Tarot and playing cards represent all four elements. The Major Arcana is made of 22 cards that reveal information about the bigger picture of your life. Now, when it comes to storing your cards, you're going to want to put them in a place where no one's going to be able to have access to them. So keep them out of the hands of other people. Um, Tarot cards is a divination, they're a divination tool and divination of all kinds works better when it's just basically has your energies on them. Okay. Um, this is one of the reasons why, you know, when you get your deck, it's, it's, a, I, it's better to like cleanse them, make sure that all the energies are removed and you want to keep them stored in a place where, you know, no one's going to be able to just handle them whenever they want to. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in my video getting started, I, I, talk about setting up an altar space. Some people have designated areas for their spiritual work, a place that they go to pray, meditate, um, petition um, God. Um, and if they have these sort of spaces, and this is one of the good um, areas where you could actually store your, your tarot cards. I used to store my tarot cards in my um, underneath a little shelf in my altar space at one time. Some people have like those little over, um, those little shelves that go over their altar or what in their little altar room. That's probably the best place to put it, you know, because it, it like everything else is a special item designated for spiritual connection. Okay. I saw these cute tarot, this cute six piece tarot bag, uh, set for, uh, for a suggested item to store your, your tarot cards. Tarot cards do come in their own box, but of course the box does wear out in time. So um, I su I'm suggesting these. I love the, the artwork on them. Uh, the information is in the description box. Prepare for your readings. You know, find a quiet spot in your home where you won't be interrupted. If you're sitting at a table, you can use a special tablecloth with symbols or special colors. Um, you can also perform readings on your bed or sitting cross-legged on the floor, okay? Feel free to add crystals such as amethyst or quartz crystal. Um, light a stick of incense such as jasmine, sandalwood, or another psychic-inducing scent to set the mood. Now, I want to talk a little bit about incense alternatives. Now, I'm an incense lover. I've been burning it for years, okay? But I understand that not everybody likes the smoke that comes off of incense, okay? Um, I know when I was a teenager, I would burn incense in my room pretty much every day. And my dad would smell it, same old routine. He would be yelling down the hall, I smell something burning, knowing good and well. But then, you know, that could have been a sign that he was getting um, dementia. But anyway, um, not everybody likes the smell of incense. And incense was originally um, used to send prayers up to the gods. Okay, that's the, the main reason why incense was used. But when I use incense for um, meditation or uh, I use incense to tap into psychic work or psychic abilities, that incense is not being used necessarily for a prayer sent up to God. Okay. It's more for me to get in the mood by the scent affecting me and it's putting me in kind of like a, yeah, the right mood It's setting the tone. Right. Okay. So there are alternatives to that. Like, um, I found this here on Amazon. It's beautiful. And I, I like the, the mosaic artwork on it. Um, feel free to use other options. Okay. Like for example, um, some people use like those little melted wax, um, cubes, you know, and this is good. Um, this little burner, you can use that for the little, uh, wax, bur um, the candle wax. Um, it also could be used for essential oils to burn. Um, 
the the idea like i said is to get you in the mood and it's for mostly you okay when you're burning the psychic incense it's trying to you know help your mind get adjusted and feel free to use um different methods other than incense if that's not your preference the um the information for this beautiful <laughs> um it's like a a wax melter a, an oil burner it, it it pretty much does a lot of different things the information is in the description box you might want to say a prayer to make sure that you're safe and protected ask to be protected from seen and unseen forces you can add candlelight but if make sure that the lighting is bright enough for you to be able to see the cards okay um, I suggest listening to esoteric style music I know YouTube has like a plethora of different artists um, different sounds you know um, and there's a different vibe and different sound for just about every mood okay and not everybody likes just instrumental music like when, when i want to get into a psychic mood i want to listen to instrumental music and only instrumental music some people might be different you know um feel free to use the kind of music that puts you in the the proper mood Okay, I, I gotta tell you, I am a big fan of using this light bulb, okay? So I'm gonna put the information in the description box with the other attachment. But, um, you know, I wanted to mention that when you, if you do try the blue light bulb method to get psychic, um, to tap into your psychic abilities, I suggest being in, in a rather small kind of confined space, okay? Because the light bulb only gives off so much light okay so like if the, if the room is really big it's not going to make that big of an effect but if like it's about the size of i don't know like maybe a standard size like bedroom or bathroom i would say that this light bulb is ideal if you have a bigger room you might want to use different lamps and of course get more light bulbs okay just to get that that turquoise colored glow um, and then I would suggest combining it with maybe a stick of uh, jasmine incense and wait for a little bit. Just wait till you start really sinking into the deep color of turquoise and, and smelling the incense together. And then once after that, you start to get more comfortable and more open your psychic sen senses open more. Now, this particular light bulb comes in blue. And I also purchased it in green as well because I wanted to see, you know, was I able to have the same sort of effect using a green light bulb? And I would say no. I'm more like into the blue. But you can try different colors if you want to. Like I said, the link will be in the description box. Okay, when it comes to shuffling the cards, I'm going to tell you I am not a great card shuffler. And people will would probably find that surprising because I've been using the tarot, I would say, off and on since the 90s, okay? And of course, I played card games when I was a kid, right? But I can never say that I am a great card shuffler, meaning like, you know, I know how to shuffle them, but like compared to some of those tarot readers that you might see like on YouTube, some of these people are just amazing when it comes to shuffling cards, okay? That alone is... is an attention grabber okay but i would like to say there really is no wrong way of shuffling cards you know um you might be a little sloppy you might drop some here and there pick them up and keep shuffling or whatever but there really is no wrong way to shuffle um if you're you you're if you're using a new deck okay that's never you know um you might want to go ahead and mess up the cards manually before you shuffle them because sometimes when they come out of the pack they are kind of stuck together. You want to get them loose, um, loose so they can, you know, easily be separated because that's one of the, the best ways of getting an accurate reading, making sure all the cards are there. like chaos, add chaos to the, to the, uh, deck of cards by getting them all out of order. Okay. Um, when shuffling the cards for reading, you know, think of the question that you want to ask. Okay. Like for example, you know, um, what energy is surrounding me today and while you're shuffling the cards that's what you're going to be focusing on okay and you, you can stop shuffling when you get that feeling that it's just right to do so okay it will you'll you'll know when when to stop shuffling 
drawing or selecting the cards. Now, if a card pops out while you're shuffling, accept it as a sign that, and use that card, okay? Um, some people select the card on the top after the deck has been shuffled and some people split the deck in the middle and, and use that card, okay? However you do, you select your card, like I said, you know, when it comes to shuffling and when it comes to drawing a card, there really is no wrong way, okay? Um, another method that you can use is you can spread all the cards upside down on a table and select one card at a time, okay? Like I said, do what's best for you and whatever pops in your head at the moment, that's that's your intuition guiding you to that card. Nothing is coincidence. Okay, interpreting the cards. Okay, most tarot decks do come with instructions. And in those instructions is um, a list of all the different cards and they do provide general interpretations. Okay, now you're being a newbie, um, it's a good idea to get used to the general meaning as you go along and soon you're going to start to combine the images with the general meanings and you'll come up with your own definition. Now most tarot readers have their own specific definition for or interpretation for cards, okay? Like for example, I'm going to use the sun card, okay? Now when we think of the sun, we think of warmth, we think of um, brightness, everything positive, life-giving, whatever. Okay, the sun card, typically when you see the, the interpretation, like from the little instruction box that, it, that, uh, um, that comes with the, with the tarot uh, deck, it's going to pretty much describe, you know, success, you're going to use words like success, um, happiness, celebration, or whatever, general words that are positive, okay? And when you do a reading, you're not just... As you go along, you're going to start looking at the cards and you're going to start picking up on the imagery of those cards, okay? Like, I remember when I first started lear learning the tarot, I started, you know, looking at the imagery and combining it with the so-called definition of the card or the interpretation of the card and starting to tap in. This helps, you know, activate your psychic intuition, your dormant psychic intuition. Then you start reading into the card even more, okay? You'll know what I'm talking about as you go along. So eventually, every tarot reader is going to uh, deviate from those standard interpretations, okay? Because they're going to start looking, you're going to combine the uh, the imagery, you're going to look at the entire situation of each card. Each card has is set next to another card, the situation and everything else. And sooner or later, you're going to start developing your own interpretations. This is what every, you know, psychic does. Now, I provided my own interpretations of the cards. They are in the description box, okay? And like I said, you can use the interpretations that were provided in the box or you can use the interpretations that I provide. It's up to you. Um, now, I wanted to talk about reversals. Reversals are optional. Now, um, a reversal is, is when you are dealing up the cards and you pick a card and the card comes up upside down, okay? And not all tarot readers <clears throat> recognize the card when it's upside down, but some do. So uh, focus on how you want the answers to be given. So when you are shuffling the cards and you're meditating on getting the answers, um, what I usually do is I tell myself that I read cards upside right only. Now, regardless of how the card comes out, okay, um, I can, I basically am telling the cards, hey, you know what, um, it doesn't matter whether it, the card comes upside down or not, I'm taking it and I'm reading the card as if it's upright, because I'm recognizing that card as it is, you know, of what, as what it originally means, okay, um, some people 
look at the reversal of that card it being upside down as having a completely different meaning and because this is how they associate it in their mind then this is a message that they're getting okay um now if you want to avoid reversals altogether like you know i don't like it when the card comes upside down so <clears throat> i like i said you know i want to make sure that my cards always are upright there's special ways that you can figure out how to shuffle to make sure that your cards don't get so messed up that they're flipped upside down and they come out upside down. <clears throat> um, I did create, you know, interpretations for reversals. If you choose to read the cards upside down, um, they are in, there are in, of course, the, the little manual is in the description box. Um, and I wanted to give an example. Okay, um, you'll see the sun card. The first sun card is upright. And the definition or the interpretation would be joy, happiness, contentment. Okay, um, if you were to read it reversed, okay, and if the card was pulled and it was reversed, then the interpretation would be depression, sadness, and slightly disappointment, disappointed. Okay, um, like I said, reversals are optional and the um, interpretations for reversals are in the description box okay so let's get started into the readings okay the first one these are going to be categorized as general readings okay and this first reading that we're going to do is a one card reading okay and i would suggest doing a one card reading maybe like once a month you know just to kind of see where you're at in life okay so um and i all of these uh readings are actual readings based on my life okay um generally i make up fictitious people you know for my examples but i since i wanted to get some updates um on my current situation i decided to go ahead and do a reading and incorporate it into the lesson so i hope you guys enjoy this okay so this one card reading you, you want to do is you want to focus on the question um in this case i was visualizing or questioning like what is surrounding my life what is the energy surrounding my life okay so I pulled my card and the card that I got was the five of pentacles. Now the five of pentacles is not a very good card. As you can see, you'll, you'll notice what, um, you'll see two people outside of a, uh, church. It looks like, and they are basically ostracized and they are shut out. Okay. So the, the definition of the card is us, uh, my definition. Okay is ostracized from employment and poverty okay so this is obviously a disturbing card so when you if you pull a card that's positive you like you know that's that's pretty good because you're asking the, the energy surrounding you is just basically asking for an overall reading of what's going on in your life okay so this was a negative card so i'm like okay i want a little bit more information so i suggest doing a three card reading when you want to follow up on information from your one card reading. Okay, so the three card reading provides insight on the past, present, and future. So since I got that five of pentacles, my next question would be, why am I in the five of pentacles energy? And what is the outcome of being in this situation? Okay, so I drew three cards. The first card was the Eight of Wands. In the past position, uh, there was urgent news, movement, and fast information. So that tells me that there was a lot of talking, commotion relating to me that went on in my community. And when I say community, not just the physical community of Bakersfield, but the online community, and every, which involved everybody who knew me. You know what I mean? Just information that uh what i'm perceiving is negative okay to put me in the five of um pentacles energy okay so that was in the past um the present moment i'm drawing the six of cups okay that symbolizes memories of childhood getting in touch with your inner child and true happiness now i will say that you know this does relate to the past okay sometimes you know when you get a card like this i believe that the six of cups relates to past issues and past people now everybody knows that um 
the people who got involved in my targeting were people who I knew from the past. That would be uh, my adoptive family, uh, the kids I went to school with, people, I had co-workers, old neighbors, anybody that knew me was involved in this, okay? Not just the people that I knew on the day-to-day, -day, you know, seeing face-to-face -face every day. There were also people from my past that I never met, like, for example, celebrities, okay? People that, you know, I looked up to or thought were cool when I was a kid growing up got brought into this, okay? So that would be my present moment. And what can I expect in the future being in this five of pentacles energy is the four of pentacles, meaning guarding my possessions, you know? And I would say that this is true. When you are someone like me who have dealt with uh, being worked, going to a job for only a little bit, and then you get mobbed out of your job, then you have to start all over again. And um, I don't want to make this a complaint video, but I'm letting you know about my situation, and this gave me insight on things basically. I would say this three card reading is stuff that I already know, but it's good for you, good to use as an example. Now, when it comes to guarding my possessions, I'm going to say that this is true because. Um, you can't really survive properly working in the manner that they were setting me up in. Okay, like, you know, you start a job and then they, the environment would get extremely toxic. So they would end up, you know, bullying me. And of course, you know, they, they like to fire you for whatever reason, which puts you out of work. So if you had like things like a car payment, credit card payments, bills and stuff like that, you're always going to be struggling to pay them it the, the system is built up to create people and put people in places of poverty okay so yeah you're going to you're going to save like every plastic bag every single thing that you have you're going to be i'm not a hoarder mind you okay i'm not one of those okay but i will i am able to be more thrifty and be more responsible when it comes to you know eking out you know money or what I'm going to buy or you know saving things that I feel are going to be useful for me in the future okay so yes I would say that this three card reading was on 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 target the third reading is called a ten card reading that some people refer to as the Celtic cross this reading dives deeper into your questions so I did my one card reading, I did a three card reading afterwards, and sometimes that's just not enough. Sometimes you want to get a little bit more details, so you do this 10 card reading. So I'm still using the question, you know, why am I in this five of pentacles energy? I'm thinking about the entire situation all, all around, okay? So I'm shuffling the cards, and I pull my first card, and the first card I pulled was the queen of cups, okay? So the first, the first card represents um you know uh me and the situation okay so the situation is is that um, i'm perceived by this particular group of uh, my network to be a and, and this is their this is their perception not what i think of myself but this is just the perception, the overall energy, okay? Um, the Queen of Cups is described as a beautiful woman possessing intellect, kindness, and empathy, and love. Okay. In a 10-card reading, also known as a Celtic cross spread, okay, the second card is placed sideways to indicate challenges and obstacles. So the card that I picked was the Page of Pentacles. Now, my interpretation is a young person with a new beginning, internship, student, training, basically, okay? So the obstacle that prevents me from moving forward is either a young person who uh, feels as though they are educated, or it could be myself, right? So I know that there was an issue relating to um, me not having a bachelor's degree, and they, came in and trafficked me and I had no way, no way of knowing that. Basically, they were putting out ads in the paper and I was responding to those, not paper, but like, you know, indie.com. When I first moved to Bakersfield, 
they did we did use the newspaper a lot a lot of newspaper um, postings were still um, plentiful in the news in the newspaper I would say starting when I first moved here to Bakersfield in 2001 or something like that okay so whatever the case is I was trafficked they looked at my resume and then they would post requisitions that would mirror my resume and of course I'm going to apply for those jobs right okay so then at some point they started mistreating me because they felt as though I didn't have a bachelor's degree so that was their reason now uh, when I did meditation on this because this card could have two meanings okay like I said it could be somebody who is younger than me who feels as though they are more educated than I am right which is funny or it could represent me uh, somebody who who doesn't necessarily have a bachelor's degree, but still somebody who has a lot of experience. So when I did the meditation on this, I realized that they were basically talking about um, two people. Isn't that funny? So sometimes you have to dig a little bit deeper to find the message in a meaning. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next card. Now, card three represents the foundation of the situation, you know, and I would say in the current moment, this is accurate. Okay, so my interpretation for card three for the four of swords is getting rest and solitude before taking action. I'm taking a break. So obviously, I'm not uh, going to work. Okay, so that answers the question as to why I'm in this five foot five of pentacles energy okay but it also gives insight as to i'm starting to understand a little bit more based on the other cards uh one and two along with number three is the reason why i'm getting rest and having solitude and not taking action is because of a direct result as to uh, the issue relating to card number two okay so um, I've been blocked, meaning I've been dealing with somebody preventing me from moving on a specific person. Then, of course, that evolved into a group, okay, which is something I already know. I've been out of work for a long time because of this targeting issue. So let me go on to card number four. Okay, card number four represents the past issue that is still relevant to the situation, okay? And the card that I, I picked was five of wands reversed okay so this is one of the examples it's great it came out reverse wonderful okay so this is a a good part of the lesson for the people who are getting experience okay so the definition or the interpretation is taking the competition and disputes to the legal system now everybody who knows my situation has been following my story knows that i did not take this to the legal system because i was blocked harassed and everyone was on their little uh, participating in their human trafficking game okay so but was this issue a legal system issue absolutely and it should have been taken to the highest court level in the united states okay because of the violations of what was going on now i want to say sometimes we get cards and you get an interpretation okay and i did provide the interpretation okay of the reversal or any card that's even upright sometimes you're like okay i don't understand the root of that card sometimes if you're doing a spread it's okay to shake up the the deck start shuffling the cards again and say could you give me a little bit more insight on this particular card and then another card will pop up it doesn't necessarily have to be a part of the spread here it's just to get you get clarity on the situation if you're if you're unclear okay it might give you another probe into or hint of what it's giving uh talking about okay so when I did, I'm an intuitive person, okay? So I started really thinking, okay, I remember the issues that I was dealing with, okay? Um, I knew when I left, like, for example, the farmer's place or whatever, I was dealing with harassment, and this this went on and on and on and on and on, okay? Yes, this was definitely the, the legal issue. And as I was doing my meditation, getting downloads, okay, I was reminded of the fact that this started off as an experiment, with a lot of unethical treatment and people who got um, involved in it, who were, um, who, that would be the people that I used to know, that would be the people on Facebook. Some of the celebrities were involved in it through my manipulation and propaganda. Okay, so it was basically a racial targeting um, experiment. Okay, because if, if anybody's been following my 
my story, I was a um, product of an experiment conducted by Joseph Mengele through uh, pa Operation Paperclip, okay, or an offshoot of uh, Operation Paperclip, okay. So, of course, the behavior and everything that was directed towards me was going to be evil and wicked, okay, and the purpose was to basically destroy me because my history of being a clone is I am a uh, I am the clone and reincarnation of uh, C.B. Berganza, also known as Prince Alamehu. And Prince Alamehu ended up taking his own life, and the goal was was to try to force me into suicide. Okay, so uh, the the issue also was is that what was used in order to get people on their side is that you know I had a person pretending to be my quote unquote kingdom spouse okay so um a lot of women i think it was just important for me to say this and i know this is not a part of the lesson okay but a lot of women do regret losing themselves in relationships um and being stuck with people who are abusive now i'm going to let you everybody know and remind people that this was not a consensual partnership whether in business or in love this man was pretending to be my my uh maybe fiance or something along those lines you cannot marry somebody without their consent that is considered a forced marriage so this issue was a part of all the legal issues that should have been to court and should have been settled in court had i not been blocked by the legal system because i am in no way um subjected to somebody that i'm not married to so this was a lot of my control a lot of exercising of white supremacy why are you going to let somebody take advantage of another person make decisions for another person control another person's money this sort of this thing was an outright scandal and a shame okay so um, this was also one of the court issues. Also, the person who initiated the bullying was orchestrating this relationship behind the scenes. And I was being targeted. Another reason why is because it, it was because of the religious propaganda of telling people that I was a male in my previous life. Okay, that's religious issue. Also, I was bullied because of my hair. Okay, which relates to me being an African-American somebody who thinks that a person of my of color is not able to make their own choices that's the exercising of white supremacy which is a racial which is racial racial hatred um also i was told that i was not able to wear clothes um that i wanted because of some sort of made up fake marriage that my husband uh my quote unquote fake husband was basically saying that he was putting restrictions on me that is illegal even if we were married okay it is not an employer's responsibility to make sure i'm being a good wife okay mind you that was illegal i never even met this so this person in, per, in in this man in person okay so there's no way in the world we could be married also once again a marriage has to be consensual um also i had made a point that um the people who got involved in this were associated with politics and a celebrity group i had made recently made an issue um a statement detaching myself from this particular group which i have every right to this was a, an issue relating to human trafficking um, i do know that people are starting to initiate people who have been watching this story are starting to change workplace um uh platforms being like you know the 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 environment in the workplace and they're trying to do their best to um you know kind of reverse the issue of human trafficking i don't know exactly what steps they're taking but this explains this card okay this card was absolutely should have been a legal issue and i should have received uh justice uh financially for the um for the injustices that i that i dealt with okay because that's an issue that should have been a part of the legal system where i got compensation Okay, for card number five, I got the justice card in reverse, okay? Number five, um, position five represents the present moment, and the interpretation for card number five is imbalance, kangaroo courts, and corruption. We'll actually say corruption, imbalance, and kangaroo courts. Now, the same people who were, like, bullying me have come to the realization that they should not have done that, okay? So this should have been a legal issue but it was not it was actually something that was discussed among regular people now 
some people would say, well, there was a lot of big wig name people involved in this. So they think, okay, well, this was an official court issue decision or whatever that worked out in my favor or whatever. The fact of the matter is, is that it's just because, and I'm glad that, you know, I'm not dealing with the bullshit, like the going from job to job and interview to interview. The harassment to me is like, I don't deal with that anymore. But at the same time, that was a group of people who were operating as a kangaroo court. Now, a kangaroo court is not an official court. A, a, a kangaroo court is a bunch of people who make up rules as they go along. Just like the same people who made up the same rules to use the kingdom spouse, to create a, king, a kingdom spouse scenario. Same people who were trying to bully me out of me wearing my clothes, my behavior, my lifestyle, whatever. It's a kangaroo court. It's, it's corrupt. Okay. A lot of people want to set rules and make up um, rules, you know, if they feel as though they can benefit or bully somebody, then, you know, you're going to deal with people who are going to try to tell you what to do, how to act, and they're going to act like it's an official matter because it's within the group. Okay, once again, this shows the, I me, mean, or it's a good example of people who are doing things improperly. Now, some people might say, well, let's just say, for example, a senator or somebody who was a part of this group, along with celebrities or whatever. And I'm just, I'm using a senator as an example, okay? Does that make it official? No, it does not. The reason why is because it did not happen in a court of law. Okay, so this issue was created illegally and it was resolved illegally, meaning it was a group of people who were just being irresponsible. Some of the people were being evil, some people were being whatever, okay? So um, so that people know, and the reason why I'm, I'm trying to let people understand what a kangaroo court is and the difference between a kangaroo court and an actual court decision that references the law, and the law is the only thing that I, that really anybody should because the laws are what? They are the rules and the guidelines of standard of conduct, okay? So yeah, I was definitely dealing with a um, kangaroo court, which was rather um, corrupt. Okay, card number six is a card that stands for what's coming up next, okay? So that's like your immediate future. I draw, I drew the full card, which, uh, the interpretation of that is a fresh start, starting from zero, joyous, free-spirited intelligence. Now, the image on the card makes it seem like it's so exciting, okay? Basically, my life is basic. It's, it's really dull at this moment. I pretty much stay in my room every single day. Um, and this is a result of everything that's happened. But like I said, I'm doing my best not to make this an, a, a video about my weird problems. I'm talking about my tarot spread, but unfortunately my tarot spread is uh, a, a representation of all my weird problems because that's, I pretty much have nothing but like, you know, the same issue that kind of wallows over my head because I need new experiences. And I hope that this full card, right, will expand beyond doing things inside my bedroom. I am very, very unhappy with everything that happened and the situation that this put me in. It has basically made me somebody who is um, stuck in their house, somebody who's basically became a, um, a, uh, a hermit, you know what I mean? And I know that, you know, this caused, you know, me to see a lot of people in a very negative light. So when I'm looking at the full card, and this indicates what's going on in my immediate future, I'm hoping that I will be able to expand and have those new experiences. I am very tired of the humdrum life as a result of the damage that was caused okay the reason why i'm home right now is because of that the reason why i don't sit here and have a bunch of people i can contact and feel like i try i can trust the reason why i don't that stops me from you know inviting people over and having a life is because of that that is the exact reason why it has put me in a situation this issue has caused me nothing but problems. So you best believe I'm looking forward to the full card. Okay, card number seven is your will in this situation. Like, what are you doing to either uh, improve the situation 
or add to the situation, whatever. Okay. So in my, in my case, I pulled um, the death card, okay, which represents the end of a cycle and completion. I am not really putting in too much effort into this right now, other than me focusing on my content. Um, as far as my uh, <clears throat> effort into dealing with the group as a whole, I'm not. I'm not doing anything right now. I have become, you know, socially kind of withdrawn, um, emotionally withdrawn, um, and I don't really have a whole lot of emotions left. I mean, it has caused me a lot of mental problems, okay? A lot of mental problems. So, um, if I'm not working on my content or like a hobby or something, I, at this time, it's understandable that I'm, I should be getting as much rest as I possibly can. This has been extremely exhausting emotionally for me. It's almost like somebody pushed you into like a basement, like I said, and like locked all the doors and you're banging and trying to get out screaming and screaming and screaming. I have been making so many videos for so many years about this issue and I was fighting for my life. And so now um, I, looking back on some of the people that I used to know, um, the scenarios that I was put in and understanding the entire uh, background of the experiment, everything, I will tell you the thoughts that go through my mind are very destructive and, and depressing. You know what I mean? Because it tears down a lot of the positive images that I had of a lot of people. Okay. When you feel so disgusted with people that would do something like this to you, that takes a lot out of you. Okay. Why? Because it's important to have some sort of positive vibe towards other people in order to live fully, like to really enjoy life. Okay. Um, you, you've got to have something positive, a, a positive emotion. This, I personally think you do. This is one of the reasons why I like stuffed animals so much because <laughs> Because it's cute. It's something lovable. Okay, people, I, I feel as though in order to live properly, to be balanced, you know, I have to direct my love somewhere. And that doesn't necessarily mean romantic love. But I choose not to deal with people who, who would put me in a situation where they were threatening my life and getting some sort of sick pleasure out of it. And when you start thinking of it that way, it does take a lot out of you because you, you, you no longer, you feel like you can no longer look at people the same way. It changes everything. So it changes your plans. You know what I mean? Like you always think, oh, I want to meet people. I want to do this. stuff. like, Oh, I got it. I'm kind of tiptoeing around people. You don't really feel the way that you used to anymore. And I don't feel the way that I used to anymore. So the only thing I can do is kind of take cover, reassess the situation and try to figure out what I, uh, what I want in life and so instead of like trying to add to it like I you know I'm not trying to call up people I used to know trying to like reconnect or anything I'm just trying to figure out where do I go from this point but I look at the whole situation um, as an end of a cycle meaning you know I'm done with that it's completion Okay, spot number eight is for uh, what others want for you. So this particular group that I was once associated with, my network, are actually wishing me stable commerce. Well, let's hope that that works, okay? Um, I, you know, I hopefully that they feel is that we can part in peace because this has been entirely too draining and extremely emotional for me. Um, there's nothing like it, but I'm glad that... Um, I do get the, the feeling that there's people who want to collab with me, but at the moment, like I said, I have to do things on my own and I have to make money on my own right now. Um, and this particular picture, the three of um, wands, if you take a look at the picture um, in position eight, it's a guy kind of standing all by himself and he's looking outward. You know, he's kind of assessing this situation um, and, and that's pretty much it right now. Right now, I have to kind of do things on my own. And this is how it has to be because these people would put things in place to manipulate me in order to move when they wanted me to move. And it was like, for example, um, throwing in kingdom spouses or wanting certain people, me, me preventing me from doing certain things in a certain logical order, like what happened over at my last platform. 
So it can't be that way. You know what I mean? It was just causing me too many problems. So um, hopefully these people will, you know, are sincere in their well wishes so I can just move on. You know what I mean? And when it comes to working with other people, you know, I will definitely reach out to people once things start picking up for me. Okay. Okay, so card number nine represents the hopes and fears in this situation. So whatever is greater. In this case, you know, I do have a lot of fears, okay? But I would say that I have, I try to be as positive and um, as I possibly can. And I, I, I need people to understand that when you're dealing with something like um, blacklisting or gang stalking, it does there's a lot of you that just dies inside like my ability to feel enthusiasm a lot of times is almost impossible okay so you know um but i always try to hold on to the hope that i can have a new beginning so the ace of pentacles is which is in position nine uh, represents new work or business opportunities new start in finances this is what i'm hoping for you know what I mean? Um, you know, because I had mentioned before that I didn't want anybody taking care of me. Um, I know they put you in situations where they burden other people, you know, like I'm very grateful that my son is, you know, taking care of me. It's a, it's a joy to have him here and everything like that. But my son is an adult. Okay. And they tend to do things that is just destructive all the way down the line. Okay. And so, um, I don't have anyone in my life that I can trust. And um, I need to be able to be self-sufficient. I mean, this is something I knew all along from the very beginning, from the get-go, okay? And so, um, you know, my hope is that I can be able to, you know, start showing progress. You know, I need to make my own money, okay? And I want to do so in a way where, you know, I enjoy. I enjoy making content for people, but I want to, not just making content, but... I want to be more interactive with people. Okay, they have prevented me from, and this, you know, you only get one card for uh, position nine, okay? But I would say the um, Ace of Pentacles, to me, when I think of being prosperous, I think of, you know, having interaction with people um, and also being able to make money and, and enjoy what I do. You know what I mean? Being around people, it is it, it, as obnoxious as my targeting was okay everybody still needs to have some sort of regular exchange in conversation i need to be able to re have comments i just noticed on my youtube channel that um you know people had left comments and then youtube sometimes moves those comments off okay because some people who were part of my my targeting still showed me that they were still willing to harass me. This is one of the reasons why I don't really care about hearing any apologies from people because they can say one thing and do another. So um, my, my overall hope is, is of course, I want to be able to pick up where I left off. Things were good for me or decent for me. They're, they've never been good, okay? Not really, okay? But um, this, like I had mentioned that I really enjoyed the summer of 2009, okay? I want to pick up right where I left off in 2009. I want to meet the kind of people that I can enjoy, who are not going to tear me down for my beliefs, who are not going to sit here and like try to change me for who I am. I need to be around people who accept me the way that I am, okay? Now, I understand like I, you know, having the best kind of friend, like somebody who matches me match for match, that's what everybody wants, but that's a very difficult thing to do. So there's people who are interested in my con uh, content and I deserve to hear their comments. I deserve to hear their questions. I deserve to have feedback. I don't deserve to be isolated. And one of the most painful things you could ever do, okay, is isolate somebody, okay? And this is exactly what this group had did to me. And I had mentioned several times, like I said, it, what was so terrifying about the situation was I was making my points. I was telling people how I feel and I was being completely ignored, okay? I deserve to have friendships. I deserve to have, uh, you know, company. I deserve to have things that are up to my standards, okay? I do not deserve to be in a situation that, that I was placed in. I do not deserve to be silenced and somebody who's ostracized for the rest of the world. That's, that's wrong. So I am looking forward to a new beginning. Okay, card number 10 is for the outcome, okay? Now, time goes on and things happen, you know, 
So things can change your fate at any, at any time. But as of right now, how things stand, this is the answer and this is the prediction. The world card. Now the world card uh, is forecasting completion, enjoyment, and happiness. And we all know happiness is not, you know, something that's just like makes you jump up and down where you're laughing until you have tears in your eyes. But it's basically me going about my life day to day. Okay. I have to say that, you know, I'm the kind of person I do like to be happy. But my version of happy doesn't seem accessible, unfortunately, <laughs> to where I'm like laughing and stuff. I, you know, but I guess that's not such a bad outcome. I can't really complain. Okay. Um. So that's how you do a 10 card spread. Now, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this issue of my tarot reading. Um, like I said, all the, all the readings in this particular video are my real readings. They are not fictitious, made up, or whatever. And this is the current, the current reading. For people who have been following my story, this is what's going on. I, at the moment, I am dealing with, you know, the issue with, with my finances and a lot of the, the, uh, what do you call it, the end result of dealing with the emotional trauma and the mental trauma, the, what do you call it, financial trauma and everything else, okay? So that was the general readings are one card. You can start off with one card, okay? And if that, if, if that card looks a little funny, you might want to go ahead and do a three card reading which shows you the past the present and the future and then if you really want to get down to like what in the world is all this where did this originate what is the root of the problem a 10 card uh spread would be a good idea also known as the Celtic cross now like i said you know when you look at this particular spread here there might be times where you get confused like you know i wanted to get a little bit more information on okay why on like card number five, for example, I want two, three, four, I'm sorry, card number four, right? It's like some people might say, okay, this is a reverse card. What exactly are they talking about when it comes to the legal system? Because like I said, I never got a chance to take this to the legal system, okay? But it's actually referring to these issues that were created by this competition. You'll notice that card, card number one, two, three, four, four, um, if you look at the card upright, it shows a bunch of people like in a kind of a war like a, a struggle a battle if you want to call it that and so the battle that was created were actually legal issues okay so if you if you get a card there's nothing wrong with taking your deck and shaking it up and then do it shuffling some more cards to get a little bit more insight as to what that particular or what what card that's puzzling you is about okay because a lot of people ask the tarot card to get clarification, the tarot deck to uh, get tarot clarification on a particular card that they're confused about. And that's totally fine. This is what a lot of tarot readers do. Now this three card reading is similar to the three card reading that we did before, but this is um, a spread that I'm using specifically for enemies and obstacles okay so it, as a regular relationship reading you could use this for anyone that you know that you have a relationship with it could be family members co-workers friends or whatever now because i've been targeted and i've been in isolation for a very long time uh, they make sure that they tear everyone out of your life so that you're all by yourself okay and the people that you could call you wouldn't want to call or have any interaction with because they are very sadistic okay now i had mentioned that this was a this was a uh, program to destroy me okay and i had mentioned before that the last time i had a telephone conversation with somebody was somebody it was with somebody that i knew since childhood and they were basically um spying on me um, hoping that my life was destroyed so that they can kind of brag about their life being better. This is a part of the program, okay? Um, so when I talk about my feelings um, on the experiment, um, a normal person would be like mortified by what they do. Some of these people um, were getting off on it because they were very sadistic and sick to begin with, okay? So there's people within my network that were... Um, 
you know, just really sick. They enjoyed the tormenting. They got off on it 100%. So this is one of the reasons why when I evaluated the situation, I'm like, eh, I'm not really into these people. But going back to that, I can, I'm telling you, I can go on and on about the story and it's better that I not, okay? But I am here to give you a tarot lesson. And so this particular three card um, reading is specifically for um, the enemies and obstacles. So I posed a question as I was shuffling the cards you know, how am I, how am I getting along with the network? I was doing this because I wanted to make sure that I am not going to have to deal with any more of their traumatizing stuff. Okay. It was too much. The first card I pulled was the sun. Okay. Which represents the past. Okay. So in the past, and I'm going to say the most recent past was last fall. Okay. Last fall, um, I had, you know, started to pick myself up and start, you know, putting my content together on patreon right my goal was to make a new start i left the nine to five the last employer that i was working for was bt trucking i'm not going to go that deeply into it but i i deserved a fresh start i really did now i wouldn't say that the sun uh really fit me meaning because i was dealing with a lot of anxiety a lot of depression as i was going along with this and sometimes the card that you you pulled up um is mostly the um perspective of what your enemies are saying because i will tell you last fall i didn't feel like i was the sun i didn't feel joyful i didn't feel any happiness and i certainly didn't feel any contentment okay but to them okay to them that's what you were looking like i i actually came off as somebody who was happy i was not i was i was mentally destroyed okay literally i i, I could not handle it anymore but and i was struggling to do the things I had to do, but I knew that I had to take care of myself by making some sort of money. So I started to, you know, try to be positive, do what I could, and I looked at it as a new start. So that's the card I got for the past. Okay, now this is number um, number two, okay, represents the present moment. And what I have in the present moment is the Nine of Swords, okay, which represents constant non-stop worry, mental torment. I, I would say that this is true. I still deal with waking up in the middle of the night. I still deal with sometimes, you know, me waking up and then going on and on and on and out for hours ranting about, you know, the injustice and, you know, feeling like I'm confined in a box or feeling like, you know, something damaging or da dangerous is constantly looming over my head. This is, where, this is a psychological effect of somebody who has been dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, somebody who has dealt with isolation, a forced isolation, somebody who got um, understood the scope of what these people did and dealing with what I call mental annihilation, okay? Now, we all know somebody in my situation who used to look favorably um, towards people, like people that I used to know, I used to look at them favorably. Why would I have anything to get against them? So I felt a positive feeling when I would think about them, right? Now I look at these people as people who were possibly murderous. Do you see how this changes things? And when you think about somebody deriving pleasure off of killing somebody or trying to kill somebody through participation of a Nazi experiment, guess what? That causes a lot of a mental problems, okay? So I have a lot of flashbacks mental problems, um, depression, um, sick feelings, uh, disturbed feelings, you know, dealing, I, I have a hard time work, um, doing things online. I have a hard time doing a lot of stuff as a direct result of the wickedness that was directed towards me. And I, chances are, I will probably be this way for the rest of my life. Okay. Because I will never get proper care. I will never get, you know, the proper closure. Okay. I really, I should have received a compensation for this okay and so when you find, feel like you you understand all the um the devastation that they caused and then you i encountered dealing with stagnation when i dealt with patreon right that was another threat to my life that's exactly how i looked at it all created by a kingdom spouse orchestrated by my sister lisa who was following the instructions or at least inspired by somebody who had a position of power 
Okay, when you start thinking about all the corruption that exists in your life, okay, all the wicked people in your life, all the negative feelings that people were directing towards you, you're going, it's going to affect you. Now, like I said, I'm better off than a lot of people because a lot of people would be in a lot of a worse situation. And I'll tell you, I take my spiritual baths and I wear my amulets, okay? But being realistically, realistic, you know, that this still, I still deal with mental issues. If you're going to be tortured, if I was tortured lifelong, which basically since since kindergarten, not with kindergarten, first grade or so, okay, bullying, 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 somebody trying to constrict, telling me how to live, giving me nothing to live for, that is emotional abuse, okay? And this is what I live with. I have mental illness. I mean, when I say mental illness, I'm still able to know what's right and wrong. I still can make decisions, but I deal with a lot of depression, and I also have uh, avoidant behavior, meaning I do not want to deal with people. If I feel like I don't want to deal with you, I don't want to deal with you. There are days where I put off going to the store because I really don't want to deal with people, period. Okay? Um, it has changed me. Okay? I, I, you know, I look at people um, as evil, wicked, and I, and I can't change that. So somebody who, who exists in that way all the time, you know, there's a, that's a lot going on in a person. Okay, the last picture, thing I have, okay, based on the question of this relationship with the network, this is the future, okay? If I was to rely on this network, I'm going to deal with being ostracized from employment and poverty. Why? Because the, the network represented me in a very negative light, okay? They were the ones who were responsible for just damaging my reputation. I'm going to talk about the reason why I was literally kidnapped okay just like i was when i was prince alamehu kidnapped from ethiopia i was kidnapped on the internet i was kidnapped online i was kidnapped through employment okay so i i didn't know it's like i walked into a trap when i applied for that job on in the newspaper right i walked into a trap when i went into indeed.com or i was on facebook or whatever okay so you know people thought that they could tear me down because i didn't have a bachelor's degree and they were rubbing it in my face this is the evil that i'm talking about okay somebody who is disadvantaged meaning when i say disadvantaged i'm not trying to make it up as an excuse okay of course you know i just recently started going back down memory lane and understanding that i was a target of this program okay but what people wanted to do to somebody like me these these people wanted me to feel inferior to them to, they also wanted to exert their power over me and they wanted to rub it in my face. There is no lie about that. There's no exaggeration. Okay. So, um, they told everybody that, you know, I wasn't educated, that I was nothing, that I was whatever. So they spread this everywhere they possibly could and they caused me problems. Legally, I have every right to work if I want to. Okay. But they also had somebody pretending to be a kingdom spouse and people were dumb enough to believe that. Through brainwashing, my so-called kingdom spouse did not want me working because he felt as though it was in his right that I didn't have a bachelor's degree so he was gonna make that decision for me. Mind you, he and I were never married. We never consummated our marriage, never had sex with a dude, never held his hand, never gazed into his eyes. He's not my fucking husband, okay? So to rely on these people to be associated with this work network is absolutely nothing. Mind you, a lot of these people are no longer here and they got what they deserve. So why would I want to waste my time in a network where they can't do anything for me? Okay, this right here is my little spread and it's very basic. Now, um, when it comes to understanding tarot cards, I, I can understand them, you know, I can read them. Um, I'm more of some, somebody who, who appreciates the intuitive messages that I get more so than using tarot. Okay. Or, or playing cards for that matter. But you know, they have their place and you know, I'm going to go ahead and use them. Now, when it comes to creating your own spreads, you know, I encourage people to do that. You can write out, you know, what kind of questions you have and arrange them any way you want to. I created this friend or foe reading, okay? And really, it's just a five-card reading, okay? Does it have to be arranged that way? No, it could be one box one box underneath the other. It could be uh, arranged in the size of a plus sign. It could be 
any way you want to. And you can add as many um, card slots as you want to. You don't have to just have five cards. You can create your own, okay? But this is my friend of both sp um, a spread, and I decided to go ahead and use it again for this demonstration for tarot cards. If you saw my, my divination by um, spell work video, you will know that I've already went through these spreads using playing cards. Now we're using the tarot cards and my information is more up to date. So the question is for the friend of foe, um, number one, why does the, spec, the suspect have an issue with me? Okay, so we wanna know uh, by me closing that question, why does my group not like me why did they mistreat me what, what was the deal okay so the answer i got was um the seven of Pen pentacles admiring one's own work skill or craft okay now there's a mixed bag of emotions that come or opinions within this group okay now there's a lot of people who they knew good and well what my put my potential was they knew that i was a successful person in the 19th century and they knew that i was a successful person now the problem with it is, is that you deal with a lot of people who, when you when you have a network or a big group of people who are working towards so-called quote unquote helping you, not everybody is really on your team. Okay, I would say the majority of people who said they were on my team that were on my network were completely against me, mainly because of racial race racial issues. Okay, like I said, you know, a lot of people struggle with dealing with people of color who are smarter than them. Okay, so they didn't like that about me. So they used the issue of the bachelor's degree to hold against me. Mind you, I am just, a, I'm probably more skilled than a lot of people in certain professions. So in this case, when it comes to my friend or foe reading, I'm going to interpret the seven of pentacles as admiring one's own work, skill, or craft. I'm going to interpret it a few different ways based on my, my intuition. Um, they didn't like the fact that um, I was capable, okay? Some of these people felt threatened by me, okay? Also, they didn't like the fact that I was more advanced than they were, meaning that I had more knowledge and skills than they did, even though they had what they call more education, okay? But that's no reason, legal reason, to stop somebody from working. So that's position one. Now, um, I, I'm just going ahead and circling the card that needs to be focused and highlighted on. Um, I'm using the same template that I used for the other video, so I'm I've just kind of copied and pasted tarot cards over the old one, okay? It's a long story short. I have to sit here and create all my videos, okay? I may create, um, narrate, edit. I do everything, okay, for my channel. <laughs> so I kind of use a lot of the old resources that I had before when I made this video. So this is the reason why this spread looks the way that it does. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next card. Card number two in the spread is, what is their reason for being friends with me? Okay, um, and they're not actually my friends, okay? But they wanted to associate with me because of uh, the will of fortune, which means positive opportunities and forward movement. Now, um, a lot of people who've been following me have come to realize that I'm just now putting together the whole issue that happened on Ford Facebook in 2008 and how all of this played out and what it was all about. See, I originally thought that I was being just regularly, you know, just gossiped about on Facebook back then. And slowly but surely throughout the years, I stopped connecting or having communication with the people that I used to know. Um, when the bullying initially started in 2008, I could actually feel people kind of distancing themselves from me and sending me negative vibes, even through over the internet, okay? But I just thought it was my family and these people. Apparently, I had celebrities that were con that were trying to make contact with me and made the mistake they should have never interacted with people that I know, okay? Instead, if they wanted to talk to me, they should have just talked to me directly, okay? But I do believe that there was some sort of person who was kind of orchestrating things behind the scenes to where they wanted to create some sort of covert operation. And this is one of the reasons that that's a bad idea, okay? So for people who are watching this video and getting a tarot lesson, let this also be a lesson to you about doing covert operations like this, okay? So instead of these people being helpful 
to celebrities and people who were interested in me. By the way, these people were interested in my legacy in England. They knew about me, the Prince Alamehu, leaving England and moving to the United States. And I was a, a, a legend in England, right? So instead of these people, my, my, my ex-family and these so-called friends being helpful, they used the opportunity to tear me down because they, didn't, they wanted to take advantage of that network so that they could advance themselves and I could be left out in the cold. Okay, this is, a, this is the mentality of these people. So some of these people want to grin in my face now. They want to actually get to know me now or they're sorry. You know, like I said, some people can disgust you to the point of where you don't ever want to see their face again. And that's exactly where I'm at right now. And mind you, I had no idea that any of that was even going on. So um, in this case, the Wheel of Fortune represents positive opportunities, forward movement. So the reason why my so-called friends wanted to be with me is because they wanted to take advantage of my resources and leave me with nothing. Okay, so this question for number three kind of made me laugh. Okay, so the question is, what is the positive side to this relationship? And I pulled the six of wands reversed. Okay, and the answer is no victory, constant struggle. So there is no benefit to having a relationship with this network whatsoever. Now, I did some intuitive readings because I kept thinking, you know, and which I will, I did some intuitive met, uh, meditations. Why? Because I wanted to, to understand the motives of some of the people who got involved in this. They knew good and well that this, this sort of relationship or this sort of network was of no benefit, that it was absolutely worthless to me, okay? So, um, for, for many all these years, since leaving the farmer's place, they've just been spinning my wheels and wasting my time. Okay, so obviously, um, you know, I have made the decision to move on and there is no benefit, no desire to continue that relationship with these people whatsoever. Okay, question number four is, what are the dangers of this relationship? And I got the card Seven of Swords, which means getting away with a dishonest and illegal act. That would be, of course, referring to the perpetrators, okay? Um, trafficking people is obviously a dishonest and illegal act. Blacklisting people is a dishonest and illegal act. Human trafficking is an honest, I mean, a, a dishonest and illegal act. And then also, of course, um, stealing is a, <laughs> is a dishonest and illegal act. So this group of people who work together um, to have me trafficked and have my career thrown up in the air um, and then blocking my opportunities had no right to do so. Okay, it's illegal to do what you did. I am not anyone's wife. There is no such thing on a legal standpoint as being a kingdom spouse. That is considered a forced marriage which falls under the guidelines of human trafficking so um yeah not only is it a waste of my time um, to be a part of this this network as indicated by the upside down um six of wands but you can obviously tell and this card confirms the fact that they were involved in an illegal operation that i wanted nothing to do with Okay, the last card that I got, how can this issue be resolved? I got the Three of Cups, celebration with family, friends, or co-workers. And I'm a little confused by that because, you know, why would you think that somebody, why would they think that I would want to associate with people who did what they did to me? You know what I mean? Um, it's a little ridiculous. I am putting some distance between myself and a lot of people. Um, and I think people should understand that, you know, there, it seems unrealistic that I would want to have an actual relationship with the people that I used to know who did what they did. Okay. Now there are some celebrities that I hope to reach out to in the future. Right now, I am not in any position to interact with celebrities. I do not feel like smiling. I do not feel like interacting with conversation. I'm dealing with depression and I have my own problems right now to deal with. That doesn't mean that I don't have interest in getting to know certain people. But when it comes to this issue of my human trafficking and all the all the, um, all the trauma that I dealt with, I have no interest in reliving that. It was a nightmare, okay? Um, so when it comes to celebrating, 
I'm a little concerned that somebody might be looking at this as a form of manipulation, okay? And I'm not somebody who wants to be manipulated, okay? Um, I need to go about my merry way and continue on my life doing what I need to do independent of this group, okay? I am in no way obligated to work or operate within this network, okay? Now, these people thought, well, yeah, I mean, it's impressive when you have celebrities doing stuff and, and or that, that kind of stuff. But when you put stipulations on my life, trying to tell me how to live my life, what kind of religion I'm supposed to be, that sort of stuff, that is completely unlivable. That right there puts it into the category of human trafficking. There is nothing wrong with people arranging your job. There is nothing wrong with somebody, for example, if there's a platform like when I was dealing with Patreon. If somebody, I, there, there really is no reason for somebody to interfere or interject on my behalf. Why? Because the 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 um, the process is rather simple. You open the account, you upload your videos. The agreement is between you and Patreon. Okay, there is no application to fill out. There is no special requirement. Do you have content? Do you not? That's basically what they're saying. So I was uploading my content. For somebody to have a kingdom spouse or or where a marital partner comes into that, there was no business arrangement on any of those agreements. Okay? This is a problem. And this is what causes all these people to have these like people are dealing with this issue of people being able to do this kind of crime and getting away with it. Okay? I mean, I, I'm talking about it because these people have pushed me over the edge. I literally have nothing now. And what I do have, they sit there and try to bully me to like, well, they'll be like, oh, well, she's got food stamps, so she doesn't need a job. Or she's got $5, she, she doesn't need to. Yes, I, I do. It's about taking care of whatever kind of money you think I have, I still have the right to make more. And see, this is where you, you deal with people who feel as though they're entitled to tell you how to live your life when they're, they are way out of their jurisdiction. Okay, and if anybody thinks that they have the right to monitor your finances, telling you how to live your life, when they have no legal conservatorship over you whatsoever, you're trafficking a person. I have every right to make money. If I if I have, doesn't matter if I have uh, $40 in my account or I have $40 million in my account. If I want to go ahead and make more money, that's my choice. Mind you, I wish I did have $40 million in my account. I do not. Okay? I did not want to get myself in this situation to where I'm like trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. I never, this is one of the reasons why I started my account in October okay so I don't want to go into that see because I once I get on this conversation I will tell you the cause the pain and the hurt that these people have caused me okay just kind of makes me go on and on and on and on about an issue and all I'm trying to do is teach you guys the tarot for goodness sake okay so this particular picture at the end of this this reading I don't particularly like the way um, it ended meaning because I feel like there's always some sort of form of manipulation. Like, oh, we can all resolve this if we all get along as friends. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, I need to move on, and I do. I will never excuse the behavior that I had to experience. I am never going to sit here and think that it was okay or it was all right or that any good came out of it, other than some people make, make me aware. Um, these social issues aware, so hopefully it helped another person. Okay, it, it was no good. It was no good. No good at all. All right. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead, hang on a second, and go on to the next slide. Next reading. Okay. Now, if you guys saw the divination by uh, before spell work video, um, there was a follow-up that I did to that video, and I showed past life readings. And this was based on Magnolia and Ash. Um, uh, tarot spread, not tarot, sorry, card spread, regular playing card spreads that they had created by using mathematical application, which I gotta tell you, that was a really cool uh, spread. And I admire people who know how to work with the cards that well. That's impressive, okay? Now, this is a tarot uh, past life reading. I'm just, uh, I'm just laying out seven basic cards. Now, what Magnolia and Ash did when it came to like calculating certain things, I knew that must have taken them a lot of time. Um, when it comes to past life readings, you can be as creative as you want to be uh, when it comes to the tarot. Like in the um, some of the past life readings that uh, Magnolia and Ash 
had broken out, like figuring out where your location was, figuring out what sex you are. Okay, I'm sure it can be done with the tarot. And I am going to be working this summer off and on, you know, trying to get these sort of combinations. For now, this is all I can come up with, okay? Now, do I, I'm able to teach tarot a little bit basic. I'm, I'm able to get you guys started. And hopefully, once you get your feet wet, you're gonna desire more, okay? And um, you may not stop at just that one deck of tarot cards. There are some people who go tarot, tarot card crazy, okay? And they have different decks for different reasons, right? Um, and feel free to do that. Mind you, tarot cut decks can get expensive. Now, some of the ones that I listed in the uh, little attachment, uh, some of those are anywhere from five to sixteen dollars. And I would say that the average pack of tarot cards start off around fifteen dollars and up. Okay, and that's usually uh, the price price range of those. And you know, depending on what they're made of. Uh, the texture of them. I have some nice glossy type uh, tarot cards and I have some that are just rather, you know, standard and plain. But a lot of people just like how there's different energy, energy on the cards. You know, like if you could get to see um, maybe one of your very favorite characters, you know, um, be in a, uh, a role of, um, you know, like maybe the, the, the Queen of Wands or the, the Ten of Cups or something like that. It's nice to see. So, you know, um, and I'm the kind of person, you know, I love Hello Kitty. I like mystical things. So if I find, you know, prints or designs that intrigue me, I'm going to add it to my collection. So there's some people who have tarot cards who have like several decks, okay? So, uh, but I am going to be working with uh, the tarot, tarot to create different past life spreads. Now, I know that you can designate cards to represent whatever you want to do, okay? When you do these special spreads, like you can do um, tarot, and I might follow up um, in the future, I, I probably will, with another tarot uh, lesson on showing people how to determine when something is going to happen using the tarot. Now you can designate, like for example, wands to represent a certain season. You can use pentacles to represent winter. You can use whatever. Okay, now there is a common interpretation for uh, designating seasons and time frames for the tarot, but you know what? You do not have to go by uh, what other people say. It's your reading, okay? So you can just start creating your own. What I do is I keep a book of everything that I do create, basic spreads that I created and, and logging the result of what I got for my reading. The reason why is because I can reference Hey, my goodness, that actually came came true, you know. Uh, when it comes to Magnolia and Ash's um, reading, I had stumbled upon their website sometime around 2017, and I got this information that I was, you know, born in Africa and all this other stuff. And I, I kind of put it away, and then I was a male. I was a male in my past, so I put it away, didn't even know anything about Prince Alamehu, and when I referenced my information, I went, oh, wow. You know what I mean? So... Uh, I really do recommend like keeping a log of your past life readings or any reading, you know what I mean? Also, when it comes to the tarot, um, before I go into this past life reading, when it comes to the tarot or any other kind of divination tool that you're using, um, you'll notice that the cards that you're getting correlate to the reality around you, okay? So if, for example, um, you're having problems at work and you get a tarot reading like that, you're going to start noticing, okay, this is really going on. The, the things that are taking place around you are reflecting in the cards, okay? Um, and, that, and it comes with time, and it comes with, you know, um, actually I would say interpret, interpreting the cards um, freely to where you don't have to use a reference guide because you're starting to develop your skill on your own. I also wanted to say before I go into this reading that, you know, um, there, you know, even though I read the tarot for myself, I do take advantage of um, watching a lot of these tarot, tarot readers on YouTube uh, because they, a lot of these people are like communicating the inside scoop of my life, okay? Uh, a lot of it is covering information that I don't really think about too much. You know what I mean? I don't sit here and, 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 and pick uh, or 
uh, dwell on this particular issue that would relate to like maybe a kingdom spouse or whatever, okay? But still, a lot of these people, the readings that they're giving, do I feel as though some of these are like specific to me? I do. And we everybody knows that my intuition is like spot on, okay? So just because you can read or understand Tarot does not mean you should stop, you know, um, watching your favorite psychic or whatever, because even I benefit from watching them and I'm, I'm intuitive. I get downloads, okay? And like I said, you know, it's pretty much impossible for somebody to just pop the Prince Alamehu thing in their mind. I mean, I understand I have a power and a gift. And because I do have a power and gift, that does not make it so that I'm not interested in these tarot readers, okay? Because some of them do a really good job. And uh, they are good at storytelling. Um, you know, I'm giving you the definition of what each card uh, represents, okay? Some people, as they're telling you, you know, or giving you the reading, they're kind of creating like the whole, you know, uh, dialogue and you're following along and you're entertained. So there's a, there's a skill and there's a um, an art to it, okay? If you want to pursue that further. Uh, okay, so let's get into this past life reading. Like I said, you know, this is just a general past life reading. Um, you know, I am going to be working on, um, you know, trying to figure out how I can like split, so maybe working with the major arcana and, and designating certain locations to them so that once those cards pop up, they can indicate, you know, okay, this is a location similar to what Magnolia and Ash did. Okay. And I am not in any way, um, saying that I'm as good as them. Okay. Cause to me, what I was so impressed with their spread that they're the master. I'm not even going to touch that. Okay, so let's get into the reading. Okay, now of course this is CB Baganda's past life reading, okay? And what's highlighted in yellow is the box that it relates to. Um, so card number one is to represent you in your past life, okay? So I pulled the five of swords, which means a dispute that leads to dishonor. Okay, so when Prince Alamehu, also known as C.B. Brianza, um, he was dealing with a lot of campaign smears, very much like myself in this life. Um, same situation where, uh, you know, people were taking advantage of him and he was, you know, uh, dealing with um, unfair behavior, people stealing from him, people grinning in his face, betrayal after betrayal, and then, you know, infiltrating people that he did care about. So, um, this is basically how he lived his life, and towards the end, he couldn't take it anymore. So, position one would be card um, five of swords. Okay, number two is, what was your unfinished mission, right? And so, I kept thinking that maybe, like, um, a, a card that would represent, you know, family would appear, um, which would, would not have surprised me if it did. I bet you if I was to redo this spread or get more information on this particular card that showed up, um, it would indicate that, um, they would indicate that eventually because, you know, I can only put one card in one, in one slot. <laughs> but what I ended up getting was the Hierophant. I got the Hierophant card in reverse, okay? So, in my, my interpretation would be intellectual expansion in all areas. Now, for people who are familiar with the tarot, generally, um, the Hierophant is upright, not reversed, represents things like tradition and organized religion, okay? So, I came back um, because I wanted, and I must have been a very smart person as Prince Alamehu, okay? But... I wanted even more secret, sacred type knowledge. Like, you know, everybody knows, like, I am a major occultist, and this is pretty much what I live for. I live for philosophy, okay? And this is one of the burning passions that I have, I always have. I mean, and I, every time I look for a friendship, I, I'm looking for somebody who can have a good conversation with. I mean, I want to expand my mind and understanding of how the universe works, okay? Like, and I was good back then. And now in this life, I wanted mostly was knowledge and to transmit that knowledge to the correct people. Okay. That I am a messenger of some sort when it comes to the heavenly realm. Beyond my control, it is what it is. 
Number three, how is your past life affecting you in your current life? Okay, and the card that I got was judgment, awakening, divine reward, and or acknowledgement. So I don't really think it's like affected me like where people can like notice it. You know what I mean? Because it's kind of a more of a a private matter coming to understand, you know, my past life as Prince Alame who sleepy Brianza. But, you know, it, it is an awakening and it also does um, help me understand, you know, um, who, who's who. So like when I see like the judgment card, I kind of think it did present an issue to me to where I had to start making decisions about who I wanted in my life and who I didn't want to in my life. Okay. I had to start understanding, you know, who was my friend who was not my friend, you know what I mean? So I did make some serious life decisions and based on that information, because I realized that uh, um, somebody who dealt with a lot of abuse in the past, that I didn't want that to be a part of my life. Okay, number four, why should I complete my past life mission? And the answer I got was six of wands, which um, indicate victory, good news, and that I would be the winner, the winner of my own goal and plan and my own, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the goal of coming back here to accomplish and pick up where I left off. And that's why. Um, that's a pretty straightforward answer, I think. Not that, you know, I never looked at this as like a form of competition in any way. I did want to somehow enhance my personal development because I felt as though I needed to obtain more knowledge on things of, you know, how things worked in life, you know, understanding how, you know, what makes this earth plane and the, and the world around it tech, you know? So um, to pursue that to me is like the most important thing. These mysteries in life are like the most important thing. And my spiritual work is what I find most satisfying than anything else. Okay, number five, how can I complete my past life mission? Um, number three, the three of wands. Um, indicate stable commerce. So I look at this as confirmation that the Swan Song Manifesto is something that should definitely be done. Okay. Um, I feel as though uh, when it comes to me being a messenger, I choose to share this information for people who do are curious, you know. Um, and also, the message I, I, I feel strongly is to bring some sort of peace and healing to mankind to make their life better like and not it's not for everyone i'm not saying that my message is for everyone but you know there's a lot of people who are just burned out i know i am i am completely burned out by the ways of the world i find it draining i find it misleading i find it disappointing and so i'm here to give people a different pair of eyes to look at life differently to see that tomato a little differently so that you can feel better about your situation to feel like you have more control and most important is to reunite your people with their true authentic selves that's my part of my my life mission okay position or card number six is what of my past life is relevant today and the card i got was the six of pentacles reversed which means forced philanthropy loss of resources through theft and copycat creators so this was one of the things that i was really concerned about as my life as cb berganza and this is something that i do not want in my life now now i i can tell you right now just based off of some of the things i've seen on youtube there's been times where i've mentioned something on a video and i can hear people talking about similar stuff okay um but you know, um, some people say imitation is the highest form of flattery. I suppose so. But I, I do believe that people are aware that I am the creator of it. See, what what this whole arrangement was to do, the people who got involved, my family, my ex-family members, um, and this so-called forced relationship was, 
it was they were trying to bully me and and make it so that I would not be acknowledged unless of course I had to accept some sort of requirements when it came to this forced relationship I am not married to Justin Hayward and um, I, I've never consented to a marriage my family should have never had anything to do with managing my career I would have told them no okay and there is no legal reason why they should have anything to do with anything that I, I say or, or anything that I, I, I anything of mine over I'm over the age of 18 so I do not like the fact you know people can sit here and like kind of imitate me as much as they want to and really they they can't I mean that this is what people are gonna do but everybody knows that I'm the occult authority I know more than most people about the occult and I know that they were saying things about me not having a bachelor's degree. Occult, the occultism, occultism does not have required that. Okay, most people who have occult gifts, they receive them by birth at birth. Okay, and most people who study the occult, okay, are studying case studies like me. People who have these gifts. And they're understanding like the terminology doesn't necessarily mean that they have a gift or they even fully understand it okay so that is a ignorance on their part but anyway um yeah i i don't like i don't i i do get annoyed when people use my work mainly because i have the right to make a living off of my work and i don't appreciate it when people have put me in, in a um, situation where i'm not getting proper acknowledgement Okay, proper acknowledgement for me is important. It's not about arrogance, okay? But everybody has to have a sense of satisfaction with the work that they do. And so what, one thing that is going to put you on my shit list is if you interfere with my work, okay? And it's nothing to do with arrogance, but it has everything to, everything to do with keeping up your motivation. And see, this is one of the reasons why I didn't like this network because you know, there was one, the reading that we just went through, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the enemy and option one, one where it indicated that um, by, by showing the six of wands upside down, that there was absolutely no benefit to that sort of relationship whatsoever. There was no benefit in staying in a network where I was not getting um, any opportunities. They were blocking my opportunities or they were copycatting my work and not giving me credit. Do not ever do that to me, okay? Because you do that, we're done. We're done, okay? This is one of the reasons why I resent human trafficking, okay? Um, my life's work uh, needs, to, I need to be acknowledged for my life's work. This is why I'm here, okay? So no, I do not forgive people who take my work and don't give me credit. This went over, this used to happen in the nine to five, but it also happened in the 19th century where churches were stealing my stuff. And I do believe that Libra 14 was using my work or somehow it had something to do with church organizations or whatever. Now, whether they actually used it, I don't know. But I do see a lot of people on YouTube talking about the things that I talk about. Okay. So, um, no, I, I don't. I don't appreciate people ripping me off. Okay. And I will say that it is because of this network that that was allowed to happen and so for people who contributed to my work spinning spilling and me having to what i call putting me in position of forced philanthropy a philanthropist is somebody who willingly shares their time and their resources for to aid either a business or whatever i am not somebody who deserves to be in a position of forced philanthropy i will not accept that okay you do not use my stuff you do not copycat me. You don't do that sort of stuff. I know people are going to do it, okay? But don't you dare sit here and copycat me or sit here and try to prevent me from doing something and then come in and grin in my face while you're using my shit, okay? And unfortunately, I have too many people, okay, in my life, in my that, that, that old network of mine that were nothing but snakes, snakes in the grass, okay? And they expect me to want to hang out with them. Fuck no, I don't want to have anything to do with you, okay? You're robbing me. And there's no benefit to having that sort of relationship. And once again, Maria went overboard talking about her situation, but I can't tell you um, how these people, um, I look at them as nothing more than people who robbed me. And how dare you fucking even think for one minute that I have anything to do with you. Okay, so the, the last card, number seven, 
what from my past life should I cherish today? And I pulled the Six of Cups reversed, using inf inspiration from the past to move fo forward into the future. <clears throat> and I think <clears throat> that's some of the positive memories that I do have. Those are the only positive or the, the good thoughts that I have left. Okay, so I would say in the last, oh God, especially in the last, 11 years it's all been very weird very disturbing um as a lot of people know that a lot the many people that were a part of my life growing up are no longer a part of my life because they showed their true colors and you know um people like uh libra 14 for example i never knew that man i never i never uh met him in person i guess it never had any physical contact with this person at all but some of these celebrities were a part of my life at one point meaning i might have watched them on tv i may have listened to their music and uh for people like libra 14 who did what they did um that pretty much i don't even listen to his music anymore like it it tries to come on pandora and i'll just shut it down okay so but there are some deep memories that i choose to keep to myself and keep them sacred and they were to be only these positive little thoughts that I could sit back alone in solitude and think to myself are what's keeping me going okay so this is one of the reasons why I was rather devastated when I found out that celebrities were involved in this because I felt as though the negativity from people such as my my ex-family and the people that I used to know or whoever I would say that it, it, it came from up top, like people, important people didn't like me because of uh, me being a person of color and then also my religious views and then of course the toxic spread, my family was turned against me, so on and so forth, um, a big nightmare happened and so, you know, there are certain people in, in my life that, you know, I would prefer not to have a repeat of what happened with the whole Libra 14 thing. Okay. Uh, meaning like, I didn't know Libra 14. Like I said, I had, I never met him. I was definitely certainly never married to him. Okay. But I don't want to, you know, come to find out that certain people are nothing more than a disappointment. Okay. Like some people just need to believe that there's you know certain people are decent or they're what they say they are or they don't want to think that deeply about it they just want to care about certain people because they had some sort of attachment to them when they were young okay and so i was very sad when i found out certain celebrities were involved in my targeting because this issue was so ugly i did not want to associate that horrible nightmare with somebody that i cared about even if it's from a distance or maybe my uh, there, there was no actual knowing me or introduction to these people. It's just, I need to have something positive to care about, right? And this issue took out a lot in my life. But thank goodness there's still some positive memories that I preserve. And thank goodness I think the way that I do. Because a lot of targeted individuals let other people invade their entire life. Okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, no. I'm not going to do that. So I put up barriers and I protect the little things that I do have in my life that I look at as sacred that keep me going. Because there's, I will tell you, there's very little in my life. And what I do have, I hang on to. Okay, so this concludes this message for CB Braganza. And I'm going to go ahead and say a few more words in the next slide. And then I'm going to wrap things up. Now, I wanted to mention really quick that I am well aware that there is such thing as online tarot, tarot cards. And I, I have to say I have become a, quite a fan of them, although I don't really rely on the tarot cards as much. Um, like I said, I, I'm pretty much somebody who's content with getting my downloads. But, and then also, when it comes to the reason why I'm recommending trying out this particular website and also downloading their app because they do have an app um, for tarot.com and the information is in the 
little listed attachment in the description box, okay? So that you can try this yourself. Now, uh, once you go into their website, you're gonna see that they have this daily tarot reading. And it looks a lot like the three card reading that I was teaching you guys about, right? But when you create a spread, you can actually lay out cards to have it indicate what you want it to represent. So if you want to do a three card spread, one card to represent what's going on in your love life, one card to represent what's going on in your general mood, and one card to represent um, your career, you can totally do that. Okay, so this daily um, tarot reading by tarot.com, you're going to get exactly that. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and run my cards really quick to see what's going on in my life and I will decide whether or not I share the answers with you. Okay, hang on, let me go ahead and try. And if I feel, your, feel as though it doesn't really resonate with me, I'm not gonna bother posting it. Hang on a second. I just wanna say that this, this uh, tarot reading is pretty straightforward. So what I usually do is I select the card that I, that's most important for me. You do not have to select the card in or, order, like, you know, from left to right, okay? So what I usually do is I start in the middle. My mood is, like, the most important thing, and then I choose the other two cards. How how am I overall doing? Um, and then uh, you, you click the little purple button to reveal what the cards actually are. Okay. The card on the left was uh, originally titled uh, a love and the one in the middle was for the mood and for the last card was uh, for career. So I have justice, the wheel of fortune and the high priestess. Okay, and so what they do is instead of just giving you the interpretation for the card, they kind of have their own little way of storytelling your reading, which I find, you know, amusing. So let me go ahead and read you what my reading was today. Okay, I got, today you will find that your serious sight is assaulted by your imagination, dear Maria. While justice puts you in a calm and rational frame of mind, the wheel of fortune is playing havoc with your emotions. Managing this ambiguity is not going to be easy and might put you on edge somewhat. You're asking for stability and you're offered nothing but vagarities and uncertainties. Try to be more subtle and flexible in your interactions with others and leave a few things to chance. At work, changes of scenery and or travel are favored. The Wheel of Fortune is breathing new energy into your daily life, increasing your freedom of action and your independence and your self-confidence is at an all-time high. Now is the time to organize some outside meetings to meet with clients or partners and discuss the way forward and getting things moving. Okay, like I said, I will put the link for tarot.com, your daily reading in the description box. Once you're there, go ahead and look a look, and look take a look around in the website and you're going to see um, they have games that you can play that tell your fortune, that you can get um, tarot readings. They have love, specific love tarot readings. They have specific, uh, what do you call it, career readings. They have uh, readings that you can do for the month and readings that you can do for the week. Now, um, you go ahead and play with that for a little bit and enjoy the little storytelling. I love the storytelling on this, okay? It's, it's quite entertaining, okay? Um, I, I wanna remind people, you know, don't get over obsessed with tarot. Um, don't try to make answers fit, you know, and don't sit here and ask the tarot the same question over and over and over again. Once you get a reading, just go ahead and you know what you need to work with if you get um, information that something is negative or you don't like a card or you get a card reading where the last card of the reading like your past present future the last card seems sort of negative you know try to get keep pulling cards to find out exactly dig through and ask you know work through, work your way through obstacles that are identified you know um, take time out for yourself to you know get those ritual baths those cleansing baths you know, burn white candles, burn sage and, or incense in your house, keep it cleansed and work on the obstacles that are in your life um, once you once they're identified by the tarot, okay? Or, or playing card or other form of divination that you're using. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and um, I, I definitely hope that it'll inspire you to get a, a, a deck of tarot cards and then also uh, make use of online tarot when you don't have access to your cards. Now, some people might ask, why in the world would you suggest using regular cards when you can have online cards? I gotta tell you, online tarot blows my mind. Why? Because it's picking up your energy from the computer, 
Okay, because I will tell you these those cards are just as accurate as using something in your hand. All right, but but it's the old fashioned way, and I'm an old fashioned girl. Okay, I know people wanted to bring me out into the modern age, and I will say I am to a certain degree. I enjoy online tarot every once in a while when I'm in a pinch. You know what I mean? If I got my phone on me or whatever, and I'm outside, and I don't have my cards, and I don't really use my cards that much anyway on tarot, but still. It's it's an alternative, okay? And it's nice because, you know, the artwork on a lot of the decks, the actual decks, are pleasant to have, okay? And it's an old method, a very old, old method that kind of gets you in touch with the old school. And I think, you know, bringing a little bit of old school into people's life is not necessarily a bad thing, considering how things are really complicated in the modern age. But I hope you guys give those things a try. I hope you guys enjoy shopping around for your new tarot decks. You might already have a deck. You might already be working on it. You may be a great tarot reader, okay? Um, if so, I would really love your feedback on this uh, basic uh, tarot lesson for beginners. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I will be bringing you more content shortly. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.